boom, you got that right. Hey, uh, guys, it's time for an update video. Everybody wants to know what's going on with that. And uh, good news, I have good news to share. Uh, and then also some concerns and things. So I'm gonna update you guys all on my health because everyone keeps asking and this is just the best way to do it. So I love you guys. Stay stoked and stay tuned. If you're just joining us, my name is Matt. I am just about, in fact, in five weeks, I will hit the three-year mark in my battle against brain cancer. Uh, what happened was I basically presented, I have a brain tumor right up in there, and it presented as a bunch of weird mental illness, depression, and anxiety, panic attacks, and stuff, which were really seizures of my fight-or-flight reflex. Um, so one day I wake up on the floor, find out that... Uh, there's a mass in my brain, they take it out with like an emergency craniotomy the next day, and short, long story short, I've never been the same person. Um, because it's on my fight or flight, I really don't do well with stress, even just like going to a place at a time. It's a big deal that I took myself to this appointment, and uh, that is one of the things that I will tell you. Everybody asks how I'm doing, I would say if you see me, I'm doing well. Um, but then I would, that's that's often my answer. If I'm doing great, but you know, the reality is it's not It's not always that way. Of course you know that, but uh, here is the truth and I'm very excited about this. My ability to and quality of life continue to improve. It's just up and to the right, up and to the right. So I'm super stoked on that and I'm gonna tell you all about it, but first I gotta get into this uh, <laughs> into this car. We're gonna get into the windowless punish thing and I will give you guys the rest of my health update. Unfortunately, we won't be <laughs> having a very exciting ride. Uh, Google Maps just let me know that there is a 26 minute delay due to traffic. Um, what is this, LA? That's unusual for San Diego, but then again, I don't normally drive during rush hour, so we're gonna be handling that, but that'll give us more time to talk, so here we go. Uh, yeah, so how am I doing? I really am getting better. Um, I am absolutely continuing to improve my quality of life and my ability to life. I talk a lot about what that looks like and why that's good news, but first, I wanna celebrate that in like five or six weeks, at the end of September, is the anniversary of my seizure and the discovery of you know, my fight against cancer start and all that stuff. And that's a three year mark. So three years is a big deal because the last time I was with the doctor, and we're gonna talk a lot about that, he let me know that I just outlived a stat. What? Yes! Uh, yeah, so by now, with my type of tumor, uh, after a surgery, I should have to be radiating. Like, it should have grown enough that by this time they'd be going, look, like, you need to just hit it now. And, uh, dude, super cool. If you're just joining us, I was ready to radiate, and then, like, God just changed circumstances, we lost our insurance. We didn't radiate, and then, uh, we got our insurance back, but in the time it took for us to do that, my MRI stabilized, my life stabilized a little bit, and we're like, you know what, let's hold off on that a little bit, because where it's at, uh, essentially it's just such a such a fine place that I won't be the same person after doing that, so the good news is, that pin is still in that grenade, and that grenade is still on the belt, so we'll be ready to do that when we need to, but thank God I have not had to do that, yeah, so the really good news there is that not only have we not had to do that yet, but we still don't have to do that, uh, yeah, so here is my latest MRI, good news it is stable now what we did this time was we looked across a year so from last year to this year because that's how long we've been with this doctor and this machine so we're comparing apples to apples and it may have grown just like a hair or a little bit um but that's a year of basically stable mris where they're going no nope, that's okay and so he's comfortable with us continuing to watch and wait it's called monitor they call it watch and wait these things don't just shrink or go away that's not how it works although we'll see what happens right Lots of hope on the horizon, and I can't wait to tell you more about that in a second. Okay, so let's talk quality of life. My quality of life continues to improve. I am getting more and more involved in family life and in life, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, you know, when this first happened, I spent like a year as like, I don't know, almost like a, a mentally ill person and just unable to control my emotions and my thought process. I was unable to do, you know, a simple solve problem solving. Thank <laughs> you. 
taught me how to start learning again. Uh, I had like lost the ability to learn, but then also lost a bunch of my abilities, so that's not cool. Seizures and the things that I have 
these are seizures that I've been having, you know, we, we definitely wanted to take action on, you know, how do we control those better. And so we messed with medicine for a little bit. Uh, that was basically eventually found a dose that worked for me. It was a bit of a disaster. It turns out that, like, because it's in my emotional processing center and I'm so unstable um, in that way, it, messing with the medicine even just a little bit really sent me into a lot of weirdness. And so we were just doing it little tiny bits by bits. I mean, like, the doctor was helping us do it, like, five milligrams at a time. And I'm still, uh, just decided, okay, it's not worth it. We're going to keep doing the other things that we're doing. So, uh, but we do start seeing an epileptologist. Uh, and now this is really cool. Again, a doctor I didn't even know existed until we went to the conference. So we're telling her about all the different things that we do that are sort of, like, outside of traditional medicine. She says, okay, okay, check, check, check. And then, uh, I'm like, basically, if it can't hurt and it might help, I do it. So I'm open to kind of everything. And she's like, well, hang on. Like, if everything can hurt, you know, like, for instance, you mentioned this, that you're taking, how much of that are you taking? Turns out that it works really great with kids. The adults haven't been. 
not too worried about the seizures, but they are going on. I'm definitely not worried about the tumor because again, it's staying stable. Um, um, uh, yeah, like I want to control these seizures better. I'm feeling a lot of hope about the diet. I'm feeling a lot of hope about life, and uh, a lot of healing is going on, and I'm really excited about that. So as life has gotten better, our family has gotten better. As I am recovering and able to be around the family more. I mean, when I started cognition ignition, it was the first time I started even having dinner with the family more than once a month. It was like daily. It was crazy. And so, like, I can be exposed to them uh, now, which is great. And now I'm able to start rebuilding relationships. And uh, we're starting to, like, be cohesive. Uh, it's a lot less stress in our home. And that's felt amazing. Uh, the summer was so, so good for us. Uh, it really, really was just healing in so many ways. I went on the, the power tour, 6,500 miles in this thing uh, with the two kids strapped in the back, Ryder and Carson. Uh, and it was such a big deal. And just such a testament to me getting better and also so good for our relationships. I mean, we made memories and friends and so many things about that that we'll never forget. But one of my big prayers going into it was that it would be like restorative and healing for me and Ryder's relationship. And it really was. There's so much less conflict there. And he's, you know, he's a mixed up kid, too. Like, he watched his dad fall on the ground and not wake up. Stoked everybody!